So the crop on the field this time is garden mums. So Will, first off, welcome. And what can you tell us about the risk factors specific to garden mums? It's two in specific we want to cover, right? Right. Well, garden mums, you know, it's one of those crops that a lot of people, they just put them in the pots and throw them outside. And the majority of the time, they never have any problems. They fertilize them, they water them, they've listened to our podcast earlier on what to do, and they follow it, and they never have any problems. But you really need to be aware of that. There are a couple of diseases, <clears throat> one that is a big deal, and the other one is kind of a nuisance and self self-inflicted in most cases. So I think that's probably what we want to really focus on. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these risk factors. Okay, well, the risk factors, um, there's two diseases that we really want to focus on. The first one is chrysanthemum ripe rust, CWR. Now, CWR is a quarantinable disease. Now, what a quarantinable disease is, is a bad thing. Because if you see white rust, <clears throat> you must contact your local USDA or plant health inspector who will come in and quarantine your crop and then destroy the, your entire crop. So it's very much avoidable if you put a spray program on and that you monitor and you continue to spray. But if you fail to do that, you will be in trouble. We have seen over the last couple of years, there's a high incidence level um, in the Northeast US and of course, Eastern Canada, and then also up in the Pacific Northwest. And then there's little pockets here and there throughout the rest of um, North America where you can have this particular problem. And, it, and it's because um, being a quarantine disease, it has not been established in the US on chrysanthemum, but there are some um, examples where it has overwintered on plants um, that were infected the prior fall and then they overwinter and then they reinfect the crop. So it starts a very vicious cycle. So we're very concerned about keeping this under control. What does it look like is it's very, very distinguished um, characteristics. Um, rusts are always on the undersides of the leaf. And in the case of white rust, it has a white to tan um, pustule, and that's what it's called. And you can rub your finger over it and it's got little dust on the back, so it looks kind of dusty. Now, white rust should be, is different than brown rust. There is a brown rust that's out there um, that gives you kind of a brown red um, on the back of the leaves. That is not quarantinable, but still pretty much a bad thing. Um, so we really want to basically look for white rust. So if you're in the high risk areas of the Northeast US um, or in the Pacific Northwest, Western Canada, Eastern Canada, you really want to be on vigilance because you may have it and your neighbor doesn't or your neighbor does have it and you don't. And it all is about what you're doing as far as control. So watch for it, monitor it. It tends to be on young foliage. Um, young succulent foliage is where it shows up. And that's why we need to be spraying at the beginning of the season and spraying right straight through because it can move on to flowers if it is bad enough. The other disease is kind of a nuisance disease. And this one tends to be very self-inflicted. This is Fusarium wilt. Fusarium wilt is, does exactly like it says. It causes wilt. Um, think of it as um, plugging the arteries of the plant. It basically, Fusarium is a weak pathogen. It enters the plant um, through the roots or through um, nicks or damage to the stem. So when planting, make sure that you're not damaging, breaking leaves off and damaging parts of the plant that allow easy entry of the Fusarium. Um, the Fusarium, once it gets into the plant, it moves into the xylem. This is the water carrying part of the plant. And basically what it does is it just starts multiplying in the xylem and just plugs everything up. So during the heat of the day, the plant wilts because it can't move water. One of the identifying characteristics of Fusarium is that it, overnight the plant revives. So it wilted and then you come back the next morning and go, huh that plant looks fine. And then you come back later in the afternoon, you go, hmm, doesn't look good. Then it goes, huh, looks 
looks good again, mm, looks bad, good, bad, and then it pretty much dies. Um, it doesn't go on forever. You usually see it on part of a plant if you've got large, when Fusarium shows up in large plants. Um, if you've got very small, recently planted plants, um, basically what you'll see is the whole plant will be infected. Fusarium, where does it come from? It usually comes from the soil. A lot of mums are grown outside on the soil, even though you've got a ground cloth. You could have had fusarium that really didn't affect the plants that were there prior cycle, but then all of a sudden you put your mums down there, which are very susceptible to it. It gets wet, it rains out there, it waters, moves around, you basically get a little damaged root and suddenly you've got fusarium in your pot and the fusarium is in the soil, um, in the roots, and now you've got fusarium in your plants. And so um, you really have to make sure that you've done a lot of good sanitation to make sure that you don't have fusarium. In fact, both of these diseases require you to have excellent sanitation at the end of the cycle, growing cycle, so that the, the ground that you're growing on, the benches you're growing on, are clean and free of all fusarium and or chrysanthemum white rust, if this could have been a problem in the prior growing cycle. Just be aware of that fusarium can be waterborne and it can survive in the water. And so what happens is, is that if you have contaminated water, it's usually because you have runoff, you've got fusarium somewhere else, and the water runs back into your pond, then you take the pond and you run it back to the plants. And after you do this couple cycles, you start building enough fusarium that you basically, the fusarium becomes um, inoculating out of the water itself. So you may have to do water treatment. So when you start seeing a lot of fusarium extended periods, extended amounts, you may wanna be looking at water treatment. So controlling fusarium when it's a small problem prevents a very expensive solution in your future. So that's kind of the, the risk that we're talking about, Bill. Okay, so and once again, we're talking about sanitation and vigilance. Those are always, uh, should be top of mind in, in any greenhouse. So now that the growers know what to look for, specifically chrysanthemum white rust and fusarium, what are some strategies and programs to minimize and manage the risk? And how should growers plan to produce a clean, healthy garden mum crop? Well, the, um, we have developed um, some very clear guidelines on how do you manage this, these two diseases. Um, make sure that you only use clean, unrooted cuttings and liners. Make sure that you know where they came from. The major um, mum propagation companies are propagating in the United States because we cannot import chrysanthemums from offshore because of the risk of chrysanthemum white rust, which is pretty prevalent in a lot of um, offshore production. So be very vigilant about that. Also be aware of the silent carriers, the Mantock daisies <clears throat> and some other crops that um, basically are carriers. Um, we've got documentation that describes this problem. Um, that you're not basically bringing those plants into close proximity of your chrysanthemums for risk of spreading it from a symptomless mantock daisy onto your um, garden mum program. Make sure that, and that's that whole elimination of the chrysanthemum white rust alternative host. Make sure that you don't have any CWR floating around there. Make sure that you don't have any mums hanging around from last year. You know, at the end of the season, throw them away. Do not save them. Some, some growers think that, um, well, we'll just cut them back and we'll reuse them. Well, you increase the risk of CWR. Make sure that you disinfect any wet areas in your production beds, because that's most likely where the fusarium is going to be. Using products like Strip It, Clean Grow, um, to disinfect the ground that you're growing on is an important part of breaking the cycle of re-inoculating the plants. Make sure that your um, water, there is, if you suspect that your water contains pathogens like Fusarium, Pythium, Phytophthora, there, is wa there are water tests that can be done that are fairly inexpensive. They'll answer that question because you've tested it in the spring. If you've got it then, once that water warms up, you've got a big problem because it multiplies in the water. Make sure that you've got your CWR program in place. As you can see, well, there's a lot of excellent chemicals to control um, chrysanthemum white rust. Make sure that you've got all of those chemicals there and that in the young plant stage, if you're in or at risk area in the, in the Pacific Northwest or the um, East Coast of the US, Canada and the West Coast of Canada, that you basically have a um, CWR strategy and that you're implementing it. 
One of the interesting problems with um, fusarium is it's a weak pathogen, as I mentioned before. And so a lot of times what you see is you see a complex problem of fusarium and pythium. The pythium weakens the root system. Pythium is being a water mold. If the soil stays too wet, you can basically end up with pythium taking over the roots. It damages the roots, creates an opening for that fusarium to enter the plant, and then off it goes. And at that point, you've got a um, problem. So it's important that when you have high risk times of the year, when that environment is hot, when it's wet, if, you're, if you've got a lot of rain outside so that the pots are staying wet, that you basically think about managing the risk that you, um, of fusarium and how you manage it is make sure that you've got your pythium control program under, in place. Remember under very high temperature conditions, that um, subdue um, can become, um, is not effective at controlling pythium because the species that's um, more prevalent under high temperatures is resistant to the subdue. So when you've got high temperatures, think about what other alternative chemicals you could use to control pythium. Controlling pythium a lot of times will keep fusarium under control. If, uh, make sure that you use the products like Heritage because it gives you both good control of um, chrysanthemum white rust, and it also gives you excellent control of fusarium. Make sure you apply it correctly. You know, make sure that you try to minimize the amount of overhead watering and wet foliage. Now, if you're using overhead sprinklers for garden mums outside, that might be kind of tricky, but uh, make sure that you put it on early in the morning or early in the afternoon, in the day, so that the foliage can be dry. The worst thing you can do is have wet foliage going into the, into the night when basically the diseases can take off and get ahead of you. Also, something to keep in mind is that early in the crop, we recommend using ammonia to get the crop started and get it rolling. But then as the crop starts to mature and starts branching and growing vigorously, then switching over to a more nitrate feed, 14014, 15015, 13213, 15415, one of those low phosphorus, lower um, ammonia fertilizers are very good to basically um, harden and tone the crop so that it's less sensitive to disease problems. So, you know, make sure that you check your, um, the, the sheet out and then we've given you the little guide saying what is their excellent control, very good or good. This is data that um, the assessment that Ann Chase has done where she reviews a lot of different trials and basically gives it a relative um, rating as far as very good to excellent. Um, just good. So it, you can use that as kind of a guide as to what your strategy should be and make sure that you're um, applying it on time all the time for the control if you are at risk. So that pretty much um, gives you some tips to how you manage it from a cultural standpoint and it also hopefully gives you some chemistry that you can use to break the disease triangle from um, causing the problems with the crop. Excellent. Thank you so much, Will. I think it's, uh, it's good to see that there are a lot of tools for the toolbox when, when it comes to growing garden mums. Um, obviously, chrysanthemum white rust is a serious disease. Like you said, quarantinable, guys in white suits coming in, taking your crop out in bags. That's not anything anybody wants to see, but there are certainly protocols um, that have been trialed and tested to uh, certainly minimize the risk. Um, with that disease in particular. So before we wrap up this discussion of garden moms as an at-risk crop, let me just call out some additional resources for you to check out. First is a set of at-risk crop guides or white papers that are available at ballseed.com slash quickculture slash production guides. You can also find a link to that in the show notes for this presentation, as well as a link to a slideshow that accompanies the presentation with images of the diseases to look for and a chart of effective chemicals that, that Will has referenced. Also want to call out the Tech On Demand pod, podcast brought to you by Grower Talks. So in addition to episodes like this one, you're going to find many other podcasts covering a range of greenhouse specific topics with more being added all the time. So subscribe to Tech On Demand on your favorite podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, and many more, visit growertalks.com slash tech on demand. So Will, thanks so much for your time today. I know you, uh, I know Garden Mums is a crop that's close to your heart and it's mm -hmm. obvious that you, uh, 
you know a lot about it. So I appreciate everything that you and your team do to help growers succeed with at-risk crops, especially garden loans. Yep. Well, thanks a lot, Bill, for hosting this and really encourage people to um, dig into the production guides because there are a lot, there's a lot more information on different diseases that are, um, that can cause problems, but we really want to just focus on the two big diseases that growers seem to really nag them year after year. So let's uh, stay focused and have a successful garden loan season. Excellent. And I'm Bill Calkins with Tech on Demand, wishing you a fantastic season. Take care out there.